Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the sixth episode of The Lab. With us today is our second interview, AJ Ouellette. Did I pronounce that right? No, you did not. No. Ah, <laughs> dang it. Okay. Well, you, that'll be you, good. Uh, you said it how they say it up in Canada. So probably the proper way to say it, but once we move to the U.S. and you start butchering stuff the American way, <laughs> starts with an O, you just say, you know, so just Olet. Olet. Yeah. Huh. How many different variations have you heard your own name? <sighs> to me, the count. Uh, here recently, <laughs> it's just every time I talk to someone in Canada, it's Wallet. Um, just Wallet? because the O-U-E O-U. Um, mm-hmm. makes the, the wall sound, apparently, in French. Um, so it's always been Wallet. Um, Oulet is, a, is another common one. Um, and then, for some reason, it has a Q. I think they see the U second, and some people just automatically assume it's a, a Q. So we get like a Quillette. <laughs> so there's, there's, there's been many. Um, those are the common ones, though. A latte. That's my favorite. <laughs> oh. Omelette? Quit yeah. trying to French fry your name, AJ. <laughs> uh, yeah, speaking, we can get some sponsorships going right now. We can, I can change it to omelette. If <laughs> <laughs> want to give me free breakfast. Denny's, he's available. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So AJ has just returned to us from Canada. Um, he played a season with the Toronto Argonauts. Uh, had a very significant ending in regard to that they were the Grey Cup champions. Yeah, um, wild ride. Uh, as you said, it ended very well for me. Um, the beginning was, was rough. The middle was getting a little better um, <laughs> as uh, I got released in like week five. So I had a little bit of freedom there for three hours until they called me back and signed me. Um, but yeah, ending the season with the Grey Cup championship was... It was nice. Wait a minute. So they released you week five. <clears throat> yeah. Really? Yeah. So um, I went in and I made a joke. Okay, this is how crazy this day was. I made a joke to the front office people. I said, don't cut me when you see my celebration on July 4th. Because this was like July 2nd. That's when I told them. So I'm going to go crazy. I'm going to hide fireworks somewhere and shoot them off or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Just have some fun. <laughs> Um, oh and uh, the guy laughed but didn't say anything. I was like, oh, that's weird. I get a text like 40 minutes later. He goes, can you come see uh, Pinball in the front office? They released me. Um, they said money issues or whatever. Mm-hmm. I just, you know, they, they blame stuff on everything when it comes to like money. Um, so they released me. They, they tried to get me on practice squad. I said, I won't, I won't settle for that. So release me. Um, yeah. Um, they so I was already heading home, booking my flight to Arizona to see Haley. Um, I get a call from the general manager. The running back that they kept, the other American, was their punt returner, pulled his hamstring that day of practice. So they try to bring me back. They put the same contract in front of me, and I said, "No, I'm not signing that. I already know what I'm worth." Um, so they they added a little bit more to my contract for me to sign back, and um, came back. Played a couple games behind the starter. He got hurt, started, and had a great ending. Dang. That's yeah. awesome, man. That, <laughs> that's awesome. Dang. It doesn't get any better than that. Yeah. Um, so, AJ, you're a local boy, you know, being from Covington. Uh, give us a little bit of background. You know, your, your journey from, you know, when you first started here at home all the way up to, you know, Great Cup champion up in Toronto. Yeah, so um, just sticking with the football side of it, been from Covington, started playing in second grade. Um, knew that that was going to be my sport from day one, I think, just from the physical side. I was always drawn to it. Um, had a great career all the way through up until um, sophomore year high school. I uh, had a broken collarbone week two, so that ended my season pretty quick. Um, picked up with a season, I broke the career rushing record um, junior year and then broke it again senior year. Uh, <laughs> no scholarship offers except for Ashland and Urbana, which I was really thinking about going to um, Ashland. I um, wanted to take my chances of walking on. Um, went and visited a couple schools, Eastern Michigan being one. They were great. Coaches were amazing. Um, scheduled for Akron. Mm-hmm. Went up to visit and none of the coaches were there. So I don't know why they scheduled my visit for a day that the coaches were out recruiting. So that was an easy one not to go to. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then lastly was Ohio University was where I ended up going. Um, I picked there because uh, Frank Solich was the was the head coach. And um, 
with him being an amazing fullback for Nebraska and then a great coach for him. Um, I knew that was going to be a good fit for my style and the way I wanted to play the game. So walked on there. First week one, um, I was fifth string. We had five fumbles and one torn MCL. And they put me in the game in the fourth quarter. <laughs> we drove 60 <laughs> yards there for, for the winning field goal. Um, and then by week three, I was a starter for my freshman year. Um, and career took off from there. Um, graduated uh, from OU with a specialized study in sport management, health, and coaching. Um, currently three classes away from my master's in coaching, but we'll, we'll see if I go back and do that. Um, <clears throat> graduated, uh, needed a place to train for pro day and all that. Um, knew of my old um, trainer who Brandon was working with at the time. <clears throat> went went there. Uh, already th- thought I knew what I needed for training. And Brandon's, I don't want to call him a genius, but he... His, <laughs> don't his, give him too much. I, 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 I won't, but um, <clears throat> he, he, was, he was a year older than me, so he, he already knew. He was just, just a little bit ahead of me, knowledge-wise. So that's, that's, <laughs> that's the only reason he blew me out with some of his... We only made some my, we only made my <laughs> <ideas>. <laughs> Um So... Uh, we we only what Sports jumped specific stuff. jumped to thirty seven, um, ran a four four eight, uh, bench thirty two reps. I mean that's the only thing that we did together. Yeah. Um, so Made some minor there. adjustments along the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, um, ended up NFL journey was just as crazy as everything else. Um, no, didn't get drafted. Didn't get a call first day. Didn't get a call second day. Third call, I get a, um, a phone call from. An OU grad who's a uh, scout for the Saints, and he just called to see where I signed to. And I was like, I didn't sign anywhere. At this point, I'm already thinking of plan B, trying to figure out what the next job is. He goes, give me 10 minutes. And he calls me back in 10 minutes. He goes, I got you a mini camp invite for the Saints. Um, flew down there. Um, ended up signing with them. They released the running back that they um, signed in the draft. Um, I guess he couldn't learn the playbook or something. Um, so I signed with them, was there for a month and a half. They brought in a veteran running back. Um, so they released me, back to training, trying to figure out what's next. Get a call from the Chiefs. I go to the Chiefs for a week and get released. It was uh, just a an extension to where they could have the roster up four guys, so they brought me in. They ended up releasing me. Went to Green Bay for two days, um, never officially signed, just did a couple workouts and then a physical. And apparently they didn't like the way the physical looked, which, you know, the way my body moves <laughs> is not the best. Um, so they never signed me. And then the Browns called and I went there for um, training camp and got released the last day of, uh, of cuts. And then Toronto called a week later. I've been up there since. Okay. So since you had a little bit of experience then, like, you know, NFL and CFL, how would you say the two would compare? Um, Football-wise, mm-hmm. the rules are just slightly different. I mean, once the ball snaps, it's still football. Um, I think if the CFL picks up the fourth down, instead of being a three-down league, if they get a fourth down, it's more enjoyable to watch than the NFL. It's a faster pace. Uh, play clock clock is 20 seconds instead of 40 so the plays have to get in quicker um, there's no fair catches so there has to be a play on every special teams there's just more ways to score bigger field so you get more athletes making plays motioning to long scrimmage yeah just which i would hate to be a db oh that'd be an awful <laughs> a receiver get a 10 yard head start every play <laughs> good luck but uh yeah it's, it was just and it was fun to learn the, the history of the cfl and Mm-hmm. Um, playing with some of the guys that should be in the NFL, but again, it's there's only 32 teams, small rosters, so the guys mm-hmm. got to go somewhere. Uh, made some great friends, um, lifelong friends that I'll, I'll keep a hold of, um, and yeah, just just fun. That's pretty cool. <laughs> That's pretty awesome, man. Uh, in terms of you know being through the rigors of the season, how did you go about like you know maintaining yourself? You know, I mean, like you were saying, you were released week five, you know, and then as you came back and you were getting more and more, 
how did you kind of, you know, take the hits but keep on rolling? Yeah, so the beginning of the season, uh, I didn't see too much playing time because of the ratio. They kept the American running back as their as their punt returner. So that was that was back to basically preseason workout mode. Like my my, my lifts and my uh, speed training was harder than the actual practices, um, just because I wasn't seeing a lot of reps. Mm-hmm. Um, got released, um, brought back so that I could take the the place and actually play. And then it was more of a uh, maintain um, slash build on the strength that I had because um, I, di- I didn't lose any gains. I, I made a post um, maybe last week, two weeks before the Grey Cup, which was our Super Bowl. Um, I hit a box squat at 585 pounds, which my max um, going into the season is a 615 back squat. Um, so gains were pretty much the exact same. Mm-hmm. Um, going in, I wasn't sore. I wasn't hurting from the back squat. I felt great. I ended up having a couple trucks in the game, <laughs> um, which ended up going in, leading into a, a touchdown. So um, I would say my method of just building slash keeping my strength up um, is what allowed me to um, play so well at the end of the season. Okay. So you would say that in season lifting really bit like basically played a big part of your success toward the end. Yeah. Um the way the CFL is, we have a strength coach, but he doesn't have too much time with us because there's a four and a half hour window that's that coaches are allowed to schedule stuff for us, which is meetings and practice. Um there's no time for strength training and all that in there, which is stupid in my mind. Um <clears throat> but if you want to strength train with our Strength coach, it's optional mm-hmm. in the times before or after the team schedule stuff. Um, so there's a lot of guys that didn't even go to the weight room. They might have been there five times the whole year. Um, so you know that their their games just drop the whole season, and you Holy can see shit. it just in their play <coughs> by the end. Um, so yeah, I credit most of it to just getting in the weight room, um, and I was lucky to have some good teammates to push me and you know motivate me to get in there. Uh, what, it started at 6 a.m., so get in there early and my 45-minute drive to the stadium every morning. <laughs> a little different than last year when you said you could just walk <laughs> there, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Last season, I was a, it was a five-minute walk to the stadium from my apartment, <laughs> but it was an extra 1500 in rent, so. <laughs> oh, sweet <laughs> Lord. Just a little different. <laughs> just, just a little, little different. Um, no, that's awesome, man. Uh what was the name of the group that you guys trained with in the morning? What'd you call it? Uh, we stuck with the Breakfast Club. Stuck with the Breakfast Club. Since that's what we had here. Um, we had the group the last, since 2019, when I was there, it was pretty much the same guys every year that, mm-hmm. we, uh, that we've had it. And uh, in camp, they were like, we, we, we need an identity. We need to, we need something cool to motivate people to come in. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, well, I already got a t-shirt design, so Breakfast Club it is. I just had them change the colors and send me up a box of shirts and... I got a couple sizes that a bunch of guys couldn't fit in because we didn't have too many three <laughs> XL guys um, there. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Jeez, please. I didn't realize you were a three X. Uh huh. Four X or is it three? Depends. <laughs> Athletic cut. I might squeeze a four. <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot. Dang man. So let's go a little bit into the background of the the sports performance gym that you guys own, uh, No Name Athletics. So give me a little bit of a background on where that name comes from, because I don't think I've ever actually asked you. Yeah. Um, um, so No Name was made up just on a uh, apparel line that I had when I graduated college. Um, a bunch of marketing guys was like, come up with something that stands for you, that uh, if someone hears it, they'll think of you and all that stuff. And I was on the phone for like 40 minutes talking about what what we should be looking for for logos and stuff like that and um, Haley uh, was right beside me and when she heard every everything in the in the conversation as soon as I hung up she said no name and I was like that's freaking genius I love it already and we were just um, <laughs> balancing ideas back and forth and yeah uh, stuck with no name we ended up getting the NN logo and that was basically going to be it it was just going to be the, the no name nothing else attached, attached to it um, came out with some shirts, hats, and all that. Started selling those, and then um, during the free time between bouncing around from the 
hundred different teams I was on. Uh, we were working at the the other gym, and our goal in college was to eventually own our own facility, sports performance, um, all that. And um, we saw that the way that the other gym was being ran wasn't how we envisioned it should be ran. Um, just some things weren't weren't going properly. Um, so we started um, um, trying to figure out how to get paperwork and gyms, going to the banks, all that, figuring out everything we needed, um, and obviously needed a name. Um, I wasn't using my apparel stuff like I thought I was going to, so we kind of just took that and added athletics to the end of it. No name <laughs> athletics, um, I think, fit for where we wanted to open up the gym, which is right here in, in Piqua. Um, I know when I was in school, every athlete in this area was overlooked. Um, so nobody really knows anybody's name from around here that's went and played Division One um, and going to the NFL and all that. So um, I just feel like it all kind of meshed together and fits well for what we're doing. Very nice. Understandable. I would agree with you that, you know, this area is very, I guess you'd say, overlooked in regards to the talent pool. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of good kids around here, a lot of good talent. I mean... Not a whole lot of Division One schools, but in terms of like that flair, you know, when they go to the bigger ones, yeah. a lot of little schools have got a lot of talent. And they just don't go there. Yeah, they should. <laughs> Clearly, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> um, I think every every college needs to send a scout. They have a bunch of scouts. They have time. I mean, these kids play games, so many games in a season. They have time to make it to a game to watch. Um, but luckily, the kids are starting to get their film out so scouts can see it. I mean, we got what, TikTok, Instagram, and all that now, so <laughs> videos and film can actually be seen a lot easier for them. So I'm just hoping more kids in the small areas get looked at. A lot more exposure. Yeah. A lot more exposure. Um, so, you know, being a high competitive athlete, uh, what was it like, you know, mental-wise for you when, you know, you hit that, that week, they released you, and then you came back, what was in your mind? What were you trying to give, like, what were you trying to prove? What were you trying to say to them when you came back? Um, the week coming back was, uh, it was basically don't, <laughs> yeah, pretty much that. <laughs> um, it was just don't, don't bother me. I'm going to, I'm going to be my, I'm going to do my own thing off to the side. I'm going to, I'm going to enjoy the friends I've made on the team. I'm going to talk to them, but I told the front office guys, I said, don't talk to me. So I'm going to prove you guys wrong. Um, obviously someone was on something that they shouldn't have been um, <laughs> when they made that decision, and I hope they hear it. Um, but, <laughs> but yeah, it was just a, it was just a different mindset. It was no more being nice and shaking your hand every time I see you. It's just walking by you and enjoy what, what you get to watch. Bingo. Yeah. Say, I guess for you, business up front, partying. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Um, <laughs> And uh, I'm happy I got to see the mullet grow in Toronto. I didn't see any when I first got up there, and now I saw—I think I saw like five kids in the stands with mullets. <laughs> all right, we're all right. Say, so even during the Grey Cup, they would like pan the camera around. Sometimes you'd see the kids with the mullet. It was awesome. Yeah, it's just just oh, a, a trend that needs to take off, and it is. So <laughs> you're bringing it back, yeah. one mullet at a time. <laughs> Starts with the youth, right? Build it, build it from the bottom up. <laughs> you don't want it young. Morgan won't come in. Yeah, Morgan just gave you the green line on it. Yeah. What? Wait, really? really? Come not on. <laughs> oh. He said it's either the hair or the beard, and I was like, you know, I'm not. I'm not the beard is here to stay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, shoot. Shoot. Well, it's good to have you back, buddy. Yeah, it's good to be back. Yeah. Um, it sucks. Only getting certain time off for bye weeks and. By the time you drive back here, you got to pack up and drive back up there. So I just stayed up there for the bye weeks, which is what seven months for the full season, mm-hmm. counting camp. Was it really seven months? Mm-hmm. Holy crap! Yeah. Dang. I didn't realize you were gone that long. <laughs> yeah. Holy crap! Two went by fast. It really. It feels like slow at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I will say that you know when you when you and Haley both left. And I just had this goofball walking in every morning. It was definitely <laughs> different. Especially at 8 a.m. in the morning. Comes, sitting there, comes over in the stool, takes plop, just sitting there. 
You bored or are you lonely? What's going on, Brandon? You got AC over here, dude. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. like, no, I just want AC. <laughs> and, you, and you probably definitely missed all the work that you had to do with me and Haley here. Something was <laughs> broken and putting you two bad Something together. Different. Uh, yeah. No, I was pretty pumped, man. I was, uh, I don't even know how to put it. Like, everything that we worked on, you know, in, in the off season, and then just seeing you work your ass off. It was, it was fun. <laughs> oh, I was fun, especially during that great cup when you truck that guy into the end zone. I was like, going nuts, <laughs> silently in my house. Yes. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm glad that TSN got to do a, um, a short little, I think it was like a 10 minute video on kind of like my journey and all that, because uh, I think some of the kids look at all this stuff that's posted on social media now, and it's all um, quick fame. Mm-hmm. It's, it's never about the hard work and everything that people don't talk about and then goes behind the scenes and stuff so it's good that you get to see and you worked with me behind the scenes so you can definitely contribute and tell the kids yes hard work yeah. take care of yourself and yeah it'll pay off so what would you say would be some of the big things for like you know an inspiring athlete who you know going from they're in high school right now what would be some of the big lessons that you've learned over the years that you would want to teach to them or what would you say like inspired you to keep pushing forward? Um, I would just say I had a, I had a great belief system. I had support and all that, um, which is what kept me going. Um, but for some of the, the the athletes that might not have that, they have the naysayers and all that. Just just trust what's in your heart, um, and as long as you put in the work, it, you'll you'll make it. And if you don't get to your end goal. You'll be the best version of yourself that you can be, and that's that's all we can ask for at the end of the day in ourselves. So that's that's just uh, just follow your heart and um, study what kind of work needs to be put in. Because I know when I was in high school, um, I knew what I wanted to do, and all I thought was the harder you, harder you work, the the higher chance you'll get there. And I was overtraining and everything, um, which <laughs> came with two hamstring pulls every calendar year and <laughs> you could just, just mark on the calendar. Yeah, I'll have probably one right here in track season, one, <laughs> one right here at football camp. And yeah, that was just me not truly knowing how to take care of myself. Okay. So I guess now that you are this grown adult, you know, you've kind of learned, you know, your life lessons. How would you say that, you know, you've modified your training over the years just to kind of adapt and grow? Um, it's always changing every year we're learning new things but the the big things from from high school and even early college is um, I only need to work out once a day and <laughs> that's enough <laughs> um, after that and then you know you go through that phase where you're, you you want to be shredded so you don't eat anything and you're wondering why all the injuries are popping up so now I I eat more than more than enough I'd say you didn't eat anything I, I went through those phases where I was Back like, oh, I'm trying to get shredded. And yeah. now it's like... How are you not the angriest human alive during that period of time? I <laughs> oh, see how I, much you eat now. Yeah, I, I probably was. Oh, my God. <laughs> I remember just nodding off in class just because you are not, you don't have any energy. And the teacher asks you a question, you're getting angry. <laughs> just, so, yeah. Um, but, yeah, that's a big thing is uh, don't overtrain. I only train, you know, my, my one lift and maybe a speed session or I'll just every other day will be a lift or a speed session eat like crazy and sleep um, that's one thing I I feel for the college athletes is um, sleep they have to stay up late writing papers and then the coaches make them get in there at 4 35 a.m. Um, for workouts and, you know they're not getting the sleep they need sure so kind of like what we've been talking about sleep food water yep it's as simple as it sounds. <laughs> really, as simple as it sounds. People always try to look too hard into it, and and then when they see the 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 actual answer, it's like, oh, that can't be right. You know, there there has to be more to it. That's too easy. <laughs> I'll try anything else. Yeah. <laughs> Drink water. Yeah. What do you mean? There's no calories in water. <laughs> Damn. In terms of, I guess, this off season, what are you going to be getting into? Anything exciting? Are you just looking to like relax, rest up? When are you going to start hitting? You know, putting your nose to the grindstone again? So I, I just started lifting last week. Um, just came back and 
grabbed week or sheet one off the conjugate method thing just to <laughs> just to get back into it, you know. Um, but I don't want to dive too deep into you know feeling sore and all that because uh, I don't know when I'll get a call. I'm getting a free agent right now. Um, I'm talking to my agent trying to figure out what the rules are because my contract isn't technically in until February. But I've seen some CFL guys going on NFL workouts. So he's been sending my film to NFL teams. And so I'm just trying to kind of stay in that, feel good. If I need to go perform tomorrow when I get a phone call, I can mm-hmm. um, type of mindset, which I did do some boxing Wednesday. And I thought that that was going to be <laughs> fine. <laughs> I was miserably sore yesterday. Like, couldn't laugh, couldn't get up out of a chair. Couldn't. That was the worst workout. I think You're I've breathing like a bulldog. Yeah. <laughs> That's why my red shirt was yeah. hard. I was breathing. Yeah. Collapse lung. <laughs> no. But yeah, just just trying to make sure I'm ready uh, whenever that call comes, um, and then I still have to bounce ideas off these guys on what what we're thinking for the next couple months. Yeah, and you guys have a lot of big changes going on right now. <laughs> a lot of, I mean, besides the fact that Haley's watching The Grinch every day. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> yep. <laughs> I, I, I didn't want to believe it, but it's true. <laughs> it is true. <laughs> Every time I'm in there. No, I, I wake up to it and I go to sleep with it. Oh, okay. Like, it's not. It's, oh, yeah. Right. So how, how many times, times have you like seen it? Oh, I can't count. Well, <laughs> at least one, it has to be turned on when I'm going to bed, and I don't sleep with TV on. Yeah. Except for Christmas, I let her have the Grinch. Yeah. Um, so that's <laughs> every day for the past probably month now. Um, and then the first thing when we get to the gym. DVD player on, TV on, and it's it's a background noise if you're in the office. Yeah. So. Oh, sweet Lord. Yeah. Every once in a while you get caught watching a little bit of it. <laughs> I was going to say, you, you have no right. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Dang. Uh, that's exciting, man. You know, you worked really hard in the off season <laughs> last year, just watching you, and then getting ready to go. I will say, it was very quiet with you gone, with you and Haley gone. Definitely. But uh, I think in terms of, you know, upcoming season, wherever you're going to go, they'll be very lucky to have you. That is for sure. Um, I guess in terms of, you know, what was it like, you know, with the gym being back home, you know, your support system here, and then you're, like, basically man up on an island up in Toronto. How did you kind of keep yourself sane, let alone keep yourself, you know, connected to that support system? It's it's easy to communicate these days. Um, I got these guys on group chat, and then I got these guys <laughs> plus my wife on another group chat. Oh, that's, gosh. That, that she got jealous. <laughs> <laughs> she got jealous. <laughs> that was business. Ours is fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I say Haley's name in that. Yep, yep got to be serious. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> flip a switch. <laughs> um, so it, it's easy to communicate. Um, what's tough is not knowing what's going on here. Um, especially when we're moving to a new facility and things are supposed to be rolling in a certain way and they're not getting done and I'm trying to keep Haley calm and I'm in Canada, she's in Arizona freaking out and why stuff not getting done in Ohio. Um, so, um, That's a job yeah. in itself, <laughs> keeping Haley contained. Yes, <laughs> once, once those emotions start rolling, I'm just like, oh, let's get off the tracks. <laughs> it's going to be coming through and there's no stopping <laughs> it. Let's hope for Spotify doesn't work on this episode. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to delete it from our process. <laughs> we'll just lean and watch the local news. Man found strangled to death. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> but a serious note, it's it's easy to keep up with the gym because these guys are pretty good at um, posting on their, their Instagram stories and all that. So I know all the guys up in the locker room enjoyed watching what we were posting and probably need to get better at posting it on the no name account mm-hmm. <laughs> they're always like who's this Brandon guy <laughs> trying to get my rep up yeah. <laughs> building my platform it's a bum we found <laughs> let him coach the kids for housing <laughs> we put a hat on his head and we tell him yeah, you can get some food here <laughs> I'll eat <laughs> oh man you any closer to that little Debbie uh, sponsorship yet? I feel like I'm getting closer. <laughs> One box at a time. We post today, you know. He's he's the head guy of the little Debbie lifting team. So yeah. you know, <laughs> one step at a time. Yeah. I did. I did get a lot of 
in that little post I had yesterday. I said, just tag a company that I should partner with. <laughs> there's, there's a couple little Debbie options in there. Well, let's go. Oh, that's awesome. my top four. <laughs> hey, I even threw in a few. <laughs> Figured why not? Got to. Well, now the companies need to start looking. Yeah. So what question do you two have for, for AJ now that we got him back here in Ohio? Uh, I got I got one. Um, I know, well, so like, it, it's an actual serious one. Okay. But, uh, um, I know like part of like the reason that like, I respect you so much, like as a person and a human is you've never been like a coulda, shoulda, woulda guy. You've always been like, well, this is just the hand that I've dealt. If you could go back and have a facility like no name that you've created, um, what changes do you think would have made or what of that made in your career? Well, um, I got a mini stroke in that question. <laughs> it's, it's the, the biggest thing I think would have came of me training at a proper place at an early age would have been the lack of injuries. And it was just soft tissue um, injuries that I had um, that would just reoccur. And it turns out that my running mechanics was being taught wrong. Um, so, of course, I was overstriding on every sprint I had. Just how much ground can you cover was what we were being taught and um, that, that, that didn't work out for me too well um, but then um, the transition from high school to college would have been a lot easier because um, you get you get thrown in weight room and you're trying to you're trying to figure out what's going on you're trying to keep up with the, the seniors in, in college who have been on a proper program for four or five years you're trying to do the same weight as them and there, that's when injuries pop up again um, trying to keep up method yeah, but um, props to OU when I got there. Um, they actually threw us in with the big guys, I think, to see how it's done. And then they're like, all right, let's back you off. <laughs> and then for the rest of the summer, we were in our own um, program. So props to them uh, mm -hmm. for, for doing it right and getting everybody <laughs> acclimated to um, their programs and, and the, the speed and intensity of the workouts. Good thing they didn't just kind of throw you to the wolves then. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. Oh, my God. He would have tried to keep up. <laughs> <laughs> That's not really a question, but it's... Uh, some reason I always go back to the sports-specific thing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, in our, like, our off-season training, we don't do a whole lot of uh, sports-specific mm -hmm. stuff. And... I mean, it's usually, like, we'll, we'll do, like, our speed workouts, we'll do our cut, like, this kind of natural uh, reaction stuff. Uh, usually about a month before we do, like, some football, like, actual football drills, and it's more like you just tell me what the fuck to do. Mm -hmm. Throwing out some, some terms, I'm like, I don't know what that means, so you got to, like, point it to me. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> and it, how much does that carry over in, when you go to camp? Is it, like, just, this is, like, natural instinct now? You just go and hit it or is it this is that something we can pick up more on yeah so I, I had this conversation with Haley this this camp um and it was actually I'm gonna take it back to the COVID year we missed the full season so I didn't play a full year um we were just doing our our sports performance stuff uh, nothing really with the football we might have threw in our small gym a couple <laughs> still, times. Still and, icing her elbow. <laughs> yeah. So, so nothing crazy with the football and uh, step foot on the field first day of practice and I told her, I'm like, I, I feel like I haven't missed a day. Like, so the point in my career right now is I I don't need to catch a football, you know, every day or whatever. It's just, just natural. And of course, um, everything we work on, our cuts, our acceleration, deceleration, that's everything you do on a football field. So the football in my hand's natural at this point. I don't need it um, for the drills that we're doing. So um, I think what we did this off season was perfect. Um, strength, build strength, um, just work on fine tuning the acceleration, deceleration cuts and all that. And then, like you said, a month, I was gonna say two weeks <laughs> before <laughs> camp. <laughs> um, I started uh, doing some of the drills that they might do in like a combine. Just so if the coaches want to test you, that you're you're kind of fresh on that, and then you hurt your elbow throwing to me and Tommy John. Trotter trying to step up and yeah, how's that thumb by the way? Can't catch my rocket, dude. 
breath fire of the gym over there. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, Pete. Dang. I have to wipe Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> didn't even have to look at him. I just knew he was going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> Try to just cover his eyes. <laughs> whipping a nerf football in the gym. <laughs> oh, Lord. Dang, man. Yeah. Man, there's another question that I had during during that question. Now I'm going to draw a blank. Did he hit the back of the head? Maybe Sometimes that brings the idea to the front. <laughs> That's the only works I do. <laughs> That's how medicine works, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what would you say that your most severe injury was, and how did you mentally get through it, as far as that goes? Like, was there ever, like, a doubt in your mind where it was like, man, I think this one is the final one? Um, the worst injury I've ever suffered through football was my true junior year in college. Um, week one, opened up against Texas State. Um first play of the game I, I ripped off a like a 50 yard run thought this was going to be you know the year I felt great um play two um took another hand off planted and um separated well tore three ligaments in the, the mid part of my foot um and play three was a pitch to the outside to me I went to plan again and the whole foot separated and I just hit the ground mm -hmm. um so right then, I you know you call for the trainers because you're like, yeah, something's not right. And uh, I loved my my trainers in college because I'm laying on the I'm just sitting there and he's like, what's wrong? I'm like, I broke my foot. And just just as plain as that. And he starts laughing. He goes, No, be serious. What'd you do? I'm like, I broke my foot. He goes, Don't be a sissy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Yes, I love you. <laughs> uh, came off the field and got X-rays and yeah, three torn ligaments. Season was done. Um, Luckily, I had a red shirt, um, but through that time, um, I didn't, I couldn't, you know, feel bad for myself. Haley was going through her, like, sixth hip surgery at the exact same time, so it was, yeah, I can feel bad for myself, but this is the first bad thing that's happened to me in a, in a sport that's pretty violent, mm -hmm. um, so it was, what can I do to um, get on the field again? How fast can I recover? Um, went to my therapist, had connections with the Colts um, doctor. So I drove to Indianapolis, got surgery, came back, and it was just put a game plan down on what will get me ready for spring spring ball. So how can I practice during spring? Um, and we laid out the, the maps, and um, they put a schedule down for me every day. In between classes, after classes, whatever I had to do, I was in in the therapy room try not to miss meetings if I if I didn't have to um, and we just we just attack the the training the way you would uh, getting ready for a game every week um, I was just happy that my my therapist knew how fast I was progressing and he didn't hold me back he was like all right we're a week ahead of where we should be let's continue pushing it if you got any problems let me know and we just kept going and I think I was I ended up maybe a month faster than what the doctor um, thought I was going to be so that was the worst injury and there was there was no um, thinking this is it they said it was a, a pretty bad injury for the sport I was in but then they gave me a list of pro athletes that had the same surgery nice and they're all still playing so I was like yeah we can, be, we can, we can be one of them mm -hmm. and that's pretty awesome yeah, yeah. <laughs> not gonna lie, that's pretty yeah. awesome yeah. shoot I didn't realize you did that at the beginning of the season though. I thought you did that that foot injury Later in the season, week one, week yeah, one, home opener. Um, that's when I uh, I had the mullet then too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was the blonde one. That was the bleached one. Yeah. Um, oh lord. Yeah, because the the picture of the the hair coming out the helmet, and me just sitting there with the, the trainers beside me, and they call me a sissy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, that was, I was. I think I was lucky that it happened week one because I got to use it as a red shirt. So if it would have happened in like week five or week six, I would, I would have missed half a season total. Oh, so crap. I think an extra extra year out of it. Yeah. Okay. Who was uh, who is the freakiest athlete that you've ever played with, and or uh, the freakiest football play you've ever seen, either during a game or practice? Oh man, <laughs> that's on the spot. I don't. I don't even. 
I don't even know. I'm trying to think. Um, I know one of my teammates, he's up in the CFL with me now with Poppy White. Um, I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure it's pro day. Um, he jumped a 40, was it a 41 or 41 inch vert, 42 maybe, something, something crazy. I knew he was explosive. And, um, <laughs> Holy crap. I'm pretty sure I've seen him make a catch where I thought it was impossible to get to. Yeah. And he, just <laughs> he pulled jumped up. up there and I'm pretty sure someone ran underneath him. Saying, I don't know. <laughs> I, that's probably the, the craziest athlete I've seen in um, play-wise. Yeah, there's, 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 there's too many. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm a, I'm a big fan of, of truck sticks. So yeah, um, <laughs> in person I would I, I I can't think of one right off the top of my head. But highlights, you know, Mike Allstock. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's yeah his ultimate highlight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh shoot. Yeah, true. Who would you say was your biggest like idol or like mentor going through like your career? Um, Haley. <laughs> Such a cop out answer. <laughs> um, I could use Haley as, as yeah. motivation just because her hip. That's true. Uh, it was easy to get through. Um, I'd say therapy wise, when I was going through that, my therapist. I had a great connection with him, kind of grew closer as I was going with it, and he just helped me along the way. Um, a mentor, football wise, would probably be. Um, Coach Albin, he was the offensive coordinator and my running back coach at the same time. He's currently the head coach down in Athens. Um, and just the, the way that he teaches, like the young men, he's, he, he doesn't care much about the X's and O's as he does about who you are. So he would rather teach, you know, philosophies of life and, like, just be a good person in our meetings rather than the X's and O's. And then... Um, I've I've had coaches that scream with you, scream at you, and if you make a mistake, and it turns out that they never taught you that the mistake, like um, what should have been done, and he he was great at knowing, um, kind of like if he messed up, coach, he always blamed himself if he made a mistake because obviously I didn't teach it right, so we're gonna do it a different way. Um, so he was my my mentor when it came to football and learning um, the X's and O's and then the life around football. He's the one that said um, when I was going through my when I was starting my uh, master's in coaching. <laughs> he said, "Make sure you really love it because he's never at home. Um, he he always gives his wife and his kids a bunch of credit and like all that for putting up with him. But um, the the life of a of a coach is not great because um, they're they're always at the facility. They're always you know scheming and recruiting and all that. So. Scheming, <laughs> yeah." <laughs> That's a good way to put it. <laughs> Full time job. Yes. Full time job. Oh my gosh. Um, if you're allowed to, just because like, I mean, you guys have your vision, but where would you see like your vision of No Name, and within like the next like five years, like what is your end goal there? Blink twice if it's safe to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know how many. I mean, blanks that was. But <laughs> <laughs> um, we we actually are are planning on sitting down and talking about a five year, ten year plan. But my goal is to have uh, a facility ran all day um, sessions. You know, ran uh, multiple coaches in there just so we're not getting mm-hmm. you know, drained and um, burn out. But. Uh, a it's place, a place like next. <laughs> a place where these these schools around here that don't have uh, proper coaching and all that can send their athletes. Because um, it'd be so much easier if those coaches can just focus on their sport that they love to do, which is you know football, football coaching. Just t- just teach football. Yeah, we'll do teach the X's and O's. Yeah, we'll do the X's those in um, the weight room. <laughs> so, uh, uh, a program where. They can buy a package through us, and then their kids come in during our group sessions, whatever fits their schedule. Mm-hmm. These kids are so busy these days with schoolwork, sports, work now for some reason. Right. Just, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> all the kids have a job. <laughs> I, my dad said, just just be a kid growing up, and now the, all these kids are actually working, working. I'm, like, I'm glad my dad never let me get a job because I've never never been a kid, never ran around to hang out with friends and stuff. Don't but, grow up too quick. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Save yourself. 
<laughs> just about to pull the bullet mask. Yeah, just get out now. <laughs> um, but I would love to eventually, you know, bring in sport coaches that understand, um, you know, training. Um, they don't have to. They don't need to do the sports performance training. That they can be left to to you guys. Mm-hmm. Um, but start a, a baseball program. Start a softball program. Um, a basketball program. Just so. Kids are doing these travel ball teams properly. Mm-hmm. They're they're not being pushed to 150 games in the summer and and all that. Right now. Yeah, um, just luckily they don't have that for football because I'm sure people have tried doing all star leagues and yeah. summer football teams and that's just never going to work. So I'm happy that's not an option. <laughs> <laughs> It'll probably turn into flag. Flag football in the spring. Oh Lord! Yeah, guaranteed. <clears throat> Be kind of fun. Yeah. So, so you, um, get ready for that conversation on where we see the best. Okay, cool. Thank you for the heads up. Yeah. <laughs> I missed that in our group chat. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you think that you know, like we were talking about earlier, with the the lack of exposure in this area, do you think that you guys would eventually ever set up like, maybe like someone to help with like recruiting, you know, creating highlight films or maybe even setting up like a, you know, you bring in recruiters, they come watch some athletes work out, you know, they display their talent and then they can kind of get a better idea of like what the talent pool is like here in this area. Yeah. Like a no name pro day. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, that, those have all Trademarked. been, <laughs> <laughs> those have all been, um, <laughs> ideas that we've had and, um, we had them when we were in that 5,000 square foot facility. And now that we're at 25,000, we can actually start like, yeah, this is possible that we can do a pro day and then still have our regular sessions going yeah. on on the other side. So it's not like it'll interfere with anything. We can keep things rolling. So, yeah, we're just going to start throwing ideas on the on the wall and, and start making plans to, to make it happen. But, of course, one of the ideas we had was um, recording our athletes' progress um, while training with us, before, after pictures, and all that, and then um, kind of like a resume almost on like yeah. what the what they've done. Yeah. Stacking the data. Yeah, and Rap sending sheet. it to colleges because mm-hmm. um, I know Haley really wants to do it. We're just kind of busy with with just the the four that we have working um, is reaching out to colleges, just sending it because I I think college coaches would love to hear from a, a another coach rather than a parent or a uh, an actual kid, mm-hmm. you know. Every parent thinks their their kids the next Tom mm-hmm. Brady, or <laughs> you know. So, um, if we can set up where we have more coaches that have more free time that can talk to some of these recruiters and stuff, it'll obviously help kids in the area take off. And I know, just in my my short year, like few years out of college, my coaches are everywhere. I got coaches down in App State. I think coaches down in Florida, still at Ohio, um, across the MAC, in Wyoming. Like I have, I have coaches everywhere I can I can talk to. Yep. Dang man, that's exciting. Yeah. Shoot. So, what would you say? You know, with those new you know ideas kind of on the horizon, what would you say would be some of your maybe reservations or fears about like you know business-wise, but then also your own athletic career? Um, business-wise, I don't want to go down the route where we were before, before we opened our gym, where it turned into the coaches just on the road recruiting, like, or just going to talk to um, scouts and all that. I still want to make sure that we're um, prioritizing our sports performance training, our, you know, getting the kids stronger, getting the kids faster. Um, that needs to be the the primary focus and then the the stuff that we talk to is extra um, we need to let the kids know that um, you need to be getting stronger you need to be getting faster focus on that rather than talking to these coaches trying to do your sport specific training as, as, <laughs> as we're trying to get away from um, but that's my fear business wise um, and uh, it's always uh it's a weird thing to, to talk about because it's always in my head when it comes to um, 
my sports and my playing career. Um, but I'm, I found out I'm happy no matter where I'm at. If I'm, if I'm stuck here in the gym, like for the, the season I got canceled, I was happy. I was like, I don't have to go play football. And then when I actually had the season back, I'm like, I'm here playing football. So like either way, I know I'm going to be happy if I'm, if the, if my season ends, or if my career ends now, I'm happy with no name, um, making that the, the priority of the rest of my life. Um, if I if I get another call and I go somewhere else, I'll be happy playing. So it's kind of <laughs> you're pretty easy go guy. Yeah, I think I, I think I'm I'm just you know life is people people overthink it. Just just be happy with what you're doing. Those are good words, man. <laughs> yeah. Those are good words. You two have any other questions for AJ? That's a good enough to end on right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. What were you saying? No, it was. Oh, what? Yeah. It was good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, you know, AJ, thanks again for, you know, dropping in, gracing us with your presence, and, you know, always good to see you, buddy. So it's good. it's good to be back, and I appreciate you guys having me. You know, oh yeah! And enjoy the the next one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, you know, as always, you know, subscribe to the page. You know, um, hit that notification bell. <laughs> what are you doing? Um, we'll be putting this episode up here today, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. <laughs>